Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm going to show you how to make a basic pair of knitted slippers. You don't have to have a lot of experience to make these. And um, I'm basically going to show you how to design your own pattern for slippers so that way you can adapt it for whatever size you need. Um, we're going to be using some knitting needles. I'm using this set from Fab Art, and I have a coupon code in the video description so you can save 20% on this if you're looking for it. It's a set of um, circular needles. I'm going to be using the size 9s, but uh, the sizes go from from four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten and a half, and eleven. So you have a big variety. They have um, four sets of cables and or four cables and stoppers as well. So if you're looking for something like that, that's uh, forty dollars, but you do save twenty percent if you use that coupon code below. Um, you're also going to need a measuring tape or a ruler. You're going to need um, yarn needles, scissors, and um, I recommend having a gauge just because circular needles, same as double pointed needles, don't have their sizes on them and that way you can always double check if you are concerned. And also there is a little spot here where you can check gauge and um, four stitches in eight rows is equaling two inches in this pattern that I'm using here with this super bulky yarn. I am using uh, Nicole's Stitch Studio Chenille Yarn. Um, it is a super bulky number six. You could hold two strands of worsted weight together. Just so you might want to make that gauge swatch if you're going to follow me exactly. Otherwise, um, you can pretty much use my method here to make whatever size pattern you want. So let's take a look at what the fabric's going to look like when we're done knitting or while we knit it. We're going to be knitting a flat panel first and it's pretty much a rect uh, square. And the way we're going to be knitting this, we're going to be knitting it so the fabric ends up making three columns. And what we're going to have down this column, is, in this column, is a row of stockinette stitch. It's going to look like a braid, and I can show you that's kind of right there. It looks almost like a row of V's, okay, or, or a braid. Okay, so to get that, what we're going to be doing is a pattern, and we are going to be knitting and for this instance we're knitting seven, then we're going to purl, then we're going to knit six, then we're going to purl, then we're going to knit seven. Now the slippers I'm making is going to, they're going to fit about a size eight and a half inch foot, eight and a half, size eight and a half ladies, ladies slipper. So if you need to make a man slipper or you want to make a child slipper, you can still use the same formula but you're going to use fewer stitches or you're going to use a finer yarn and smaller needles. So you have a lot of different leeway and give. Um, with this type of pattern. So for my slipper, I'm actually going to knit down for uh, eight and a half inches. That's the distance from this here for, for my slippers, eight and a half inches. And then we're going to start decreasing our rows and we're going to be tapering off the toe. And then once we seam this together, we're going to end up with our slipper. So uh, first thing we're going to do is cast on 22 stitches for this size, and again, you can alter that if you're making a larger or smaller slipper. So to cast on, if you've never knitted before or if you need a little refresher, it's pretty simple. I use a very loose, simple method. So I want to leave plenty of tail so that when I am done, I can use this tail to seam up my heel and I won't have to attach any more yarn. So leaving about a foot and a half. I am going to draw up a slip knot and put that on my knitting needle. And what I have here is my needles connected by a fairly short cord because I really don't need a big cord for this project. Now this counts as my first stitch in the method that I'm going to cast on with. I'm going to move that out of the way so it's not distracting. So then to make more stitches what I'm going to do is kind of make my finger, my hands kind of like a finger gun. I'm going to dip my, um, my thumb under. So it kind of makes a V, cross it over, dip my um, needle underneath and drop another stitch. I'm going to do that um, until I have 22 stitches on my needles. Twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Okay, you can always count them again if you're not sure if you have enough. So then um, I'm going to start my pattern of knit seven, purl, knit six, purl, knit seven. Okay, so if you've never knitted before, I do have a, um, a beginner tutorial, but basically a refresher, you're going to stick your needle in that first loop. You're holding your yarn in behind, needle goes in the first loop, and you wrap it around and you pull it through. So we're going to do that. Um, seven times. So one, two, 
And this first row is the trickiest because um, you don't have as much to grab onto. And this is chenille yarn, so you do want to make sure that you have um, a fairly loose cast on, and you want to make sure you don't pull too tightly when you knit, or you're going to end up with um, with really difficult to work with yarn. Chenille does not have a lot of stretch to it as it's coming off the ball. This these slippers will have some stretch to them, but the yarn itself doesn't. So you want to make sure that you don't end up knitting so tightly that you can't get yourself out of it. So we. We've got, we need one more, so we have seven. Now purling, if you've never done that before, and that's pretty simple. You're gonna, it's basically the same thing, except you do it backwards. You're gonna pull the yarn in front of your needle. You're gonna insert your needle here, the one that's in your right hand, you're gonna insert that in the front of the stitch on your left needle, so your needle's on top. You're gonna wrap it, just like before, and you're gonna pull it through. Okay, and what that does is it makes a bump on the side that you're working. So um, it's really hard to see because we haven't got that much fabric done, but um, these bumps, the bumps, the raised parts are pearls, the flat ones, like the braid there, are the knit stitches. Then that's what it, that's, that's kind of what you're doing there. So then you want to remove your yarn to the back again, and you're going to knit six across, and then you're going to purl, and you're going to knit seven. Now when you turn your work and come back, you're knitting. Just, just knit the whole way, no pearls. So you repeat those two row, those two rows. So row one is knit seven, purl, knit six, purl, knit seven. Then row two is knit across. Okay, and I'll put this in the video description. And of course, like I said, you can alter those um, those numbers to make a bigger or smaller slipper. Something you might want to do if you're um, new to knitting or if you just want, don't want to think about when it is time to purl, once you get to the point on your knitting needle where you're about to do the purl, slide on a just a scrap of ribbon or yarn that you've tied a knot in, and then that can remind you when you're on your purling row to come back and to um, and that you're getting ready to do that purl. So if I put that there, I'll know when I come in to do my purl, I'll know that I'll see that ribbon beforehand. So I think that's a great idea. Uh, just to kind of keep it, keep it in mind, especially if you're um, if you like to knit at basketball games or while you're watching TV, you won't forget when it's time to purl. If you miss a purl, it's not the the end of the world. I wouldn't go back and undo it or anything, but it will just make it a lot easier. So when I go back on my next row, I'll just put that other stitch marker in there so I'll remember where I am. When you go to turn your work. Make sure that you don't accidentally pick up your tail of yarn. Make sure you're always working with the yarn that's coming out of the ball of yarn. That way you won't end up running out and wondering what the heck happened. So this row is our going back row, and you can tell we always go back on the end that has our um, loose yarn there. We're going to knit all the way back, except we are going to pause and we we'll are count our stitches and we'll make sure that we put our, um, our other stitch marker in there just so that we know where we are while we're, uh, when we're building our fabric. So we have our stitch markers on there, and a couple ways you can tell where you are in your pattern. We have our first two rows done. Um, if you, you can either see that your tail here, if your tail is not on the same end as your working yarn, then you're on a row where you're gonna be doing the purling. So your stitch markers are going to be um, right before you put your purl. So this is where one stitch marker is going. This is where the other one is going. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven knits. You've got the stitch marker. You do your purl. Then you've got six more knit stitches, stitch marker, and then you do your purl. Then you got seven. So you actually have on each side of your stitch marker, because this might confuse you, you have seven stitches, okay, from the stitch marker to the end of the needle. You've got seven stitches in between the stitch markers, and you have eight on the end. So if you're knitting, if you're starting a row where you see you have eight stitches before your stitch marker, you know that's a row you knit all the way back. So we are going to repeat these two rows until we have about eight and a half inches of fabric made. So that would be about eight and a half inches from where we started to where we're going to decrease the toe. So what you want to do is measure on your foot, measure your heel all the way to the widest part of your foot. That would be um, kind of where your toes start, that just that widest area. And you're going to knit, repeat those two rows until you get to that point. And then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to decrease and shape the toe.
Okay, we have knit eight and a half inches of the two rows that I showed you. So if you remember at the beginning of the video, we um, did this pattern of knit seven, purl one, knit six, purl one, knit seven. And then on the reverse row, we just knit all the way back. So this is what this, that reverse row looks like. And we end up with this stripe of knit, knit stitches. It looks kind of like a braid going all the way down there. We have that there and here. And that's going to help us shape our garment. That's going to be the sole. And this is going to be the sides of our slipper. And we're going to seam this up on the back, actually on this back here. And that's going to be the heel. So now what we need to do is start tapering our, our fabric so that we make a toe. And that's what I showed you kind of what I was... Uh, when I sketched there, that's kind of what I was showing you. And here on the slipper, you can see that too, how our, how our toe tapers in. So in order to do that, we need to make our rows get a little bit shorter. And uh, another tip I wanted to share with these need knitting needles, say you're doing a project and um, maybe you're working on a blanket or something that's really big and you want to take a break and do something else, but you need those si same needle knitting needles, you can actually unscrew these and put stoppers on the ends. And I'll show you the stoppers. And you can keep your uh, fabric on there nice and secure while you go and work on something else. Well, those are what those little stoppers are. They screw right on to those ends. So it's just really handy if you're sharing a set like this, because this is a lot of needles. If you're sharing with somebody and you need both need the same needles for the project, you can just switch it out as you go along. Okay, so for our first decrease row, what we're going to do is we're going to slide our fabric over down to the needle that has the, uh, has the working yarn. That's the yarn that's attached to the ball. And we're going to do a pattern of knit one, knit two together all the way across. So this is going to decrease. So you're going to make your first, I get my yarn to the back here. And we're done doing purl stitches. So, so for those of you that hate to purl, you'll be happy about that. So we're going to knit one. So we put our needle in just as normal. We knit our one stitch. Now, when you knit two together, what you do is you go, you have two stitches right there. You're going to go through the second stitch. I'm going to bring that up a little bit. Okay. And you're going to go through the first, you're doing, going through both of those at one time. So see, same as if you're going in for a knit, you're going you're going through those two last, last two stitches on your needle, and then you're going to knit. All right. And what that's doing is it's taking those two stitches off your needle and putting them underneath. So it's essentially just binding one of them off. So you just have, you end up with one stitch here instead of two. We're going to knit one again, and then we're going to knit two together. So we're taking our needle. We're going to go through two stitches. And then we're going to pull the new loop through and you're going to do that all the way along this row. If you get to the point where you have a stitch marker, uh, don't worry because I need to knit these two stitches together, but I get that stitch marker in between. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull that off, remove my stitch marker and slide that back on the needle. Okay. That will, that, that might happen. Well, that will happen to you on the first one anyway, not a big deal. So we got those same two stitches there. We're going to go through those stitches, knit two together. Okay. Same pattern all the way through knit one, knit two together all the way along the line. Okay, so we finished up that first decrease row. So we have fewer stitches on our needle now. So for the next row we're going to do is simply knit back. You don't want to decrease on um, two rows right next to each other because you're going to end up with the gaps and holes, especially if you're doing a knit two together decrease. So you just want to knit this entire row back and then we're going to repeat those two rows again. So our next row after we're done this one will be knit two, knit one, knit two together. Okay, so we're repeating these two and I'll put all of this information in the video description. Okay, so I repeated those two rows twice. So we had our knit one, knit two together all the way across. Then we had our knit all the way across. Then it was knit one, knit two together across again, and then it was knit across. So we just did those four rows there. And so now you kind of want to check for length. And if I hold this up with the one I'm that are one that I've just done, I can see that I just need a few more rows for length. I think I need about two more rows of just knitting across and then um, a decrease row. And I think that's going to give me a long enough slipper. Remember, it will have a little stretch because of the garter stitch. So what you want to do is actually measure your foot and see like how far your toes stick out from this point. You could actually just step on it with your heel um, up against this back and you could see how much more space. If your toes are right here at the end, then you don't need to do anymore. If your toes are sticking out a little bit, you need to do a couple more rows to make it fit. Um, and if you already have one done, you can just line that up and you can use that as a measurement. So for mine, I am going to, um, I'm going to do two rows of just regular knit, and then I'm going to do my decrease two rows again, and we'll be ready to seam it up. 
Okay, I have um, re repeated those rows that I told you I was going to do. So after we did our, our where we left off, I did two knit rows and I did a knit, two, uh, knit one, knit two together across and I did knit across. So I have seven stitches on my needle now and I am going to cut my tail with about a foot of yarn because I'm going to want that for seaming. And then we're going to thread that into an, a yarn needle. And I really like these yarn needles because they are um, they're very easy to thread. And you can use, um, I think either of these will probably work, but I think I'll grab the smaller one just because it will be a little easier to get around. So see these, instead of having an eye, these are actually called big eye needles. You just put it through the middle and that's all you have to do. Okay, so now I'm actually going to slide this to the end. Now you could slip these the needle through while it's on the cord and just then uh, unscrew the needle, but I prefer to do it this way uh, because that way if, you, if you're if you working on a regular needle, you know, this is the same technique you would use. Um, actually though, I'm going to slide this to the other end, which is an advantage of having the double pointed ones. And I'm going to come in from the other side so that I can pull a nice tight um, loop. So I'm going to pull these off one at a time onto my needle. Okay, we want to get each of these loops onto the needle. So we're not binding off. You don't need to know how to bind off to do this project, which makes it nice for beginners. I mean, and honestly, if you didn't do the pearl, it would still come out fine. You just wouldn't have as much shape to your slipper, but it would still, you know, it would still work. It would still fit your feet fine. All right, so I've got all those onto my needle now. I can set my uh, knitting needles aside because they're all on my sewing needle. And I'm going to pull this tight. There we go. And I am just going to fasten it off real quick. I want to turn this, uh, I want to turn this inside out so that my braid is on the inside because I, I want to be on the outside when I'm done. And I just know if I stitch, stitch it up inside out, I'm going to have a much neater seam. So I'm going to lock this down just by um, stitching through, going through two bits of fabric here and putting my needle through that loop. And that's just going to almost like knot it off. You never want to cut really close. I'm going to show you what to do when you have ends. Um, you never want to knot, like you never want to cut it close to a knot. So what I'm doing here is I am going to stitch it shut. I'm just going on an overhand stitch here all the way um, through both layers. This is the toe that the skinny end that we just bound uh, that we just uh, took off the needles. So I'm just going in I'm just going through and over and over to the other side again. So I'm just going to look at this and make sure that I'm going about the same, I'm sewing up about the same amount so that my slippers will match. And I just want to get those, uh, those stitches on the edge. I don't want to go too deep or I'm going to end up making my slipper a little skinnier. I guess if you made your slipper a little too spacious, you could, uh, you could pull it in a little bit smaller that way. And I think that's about... That's about the same. So then when you get to the, when you get to the end, you've already, you've sewn what you need to sew. What I like to do is a little knot like I did before. So what I'm going to do is just go through two more stitches and I'm just going to pull it through that loop. Okay. Oops, I got to rethread that. And then what you want to do is weave your ends in. And you do this because you don't want to cut really close to the end of the yarn because sometimes yarn stretches and flexes and that little end could be pulled through. So we want to just kind of hide this by going up and down just on the loops that we see on the back. Does not really, you know, you don't have to be really perfect about this. You're not going to see it. We're just going through those little loops that we see a couple times so that that yarn is not going to get pulled through even if the slipper gets stretched out. And then we can cut it close because we have several inches of, um, of a uh, yarn there. Now we left a nice long tail when we cast on so that way we could use that to seam up this end. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our thread, our yarn there in our yarn needle, leave about maybe two inches out so it doesn't pull through. If it does we can rethread it but it's just kind of annoying. And uh, we are just going to, going to um, so seam this up the exact same way. Just stick to the edge just going, just that overhand stitch. You just want to make sure this is good and sturdy so that it doesn't pull out. It shouldn't. 
Now this is a, a super bulky yarn. So if you were doing this with a different type of yarn, you may need to add more stitches, but this will give you the basic slipper construction. So no matter what you're using, you can either add a few more stitches or use two strands held together or whatever you need to um, accommodate the amount of fabric that you need to make. Uh, I figured this would be a lot more useful than just showing you how to how to do a pattern. This way you can make a slipper pattern up for yourself that will fit your feet, your kids' feet, your husband's feet, whatever, or your wife's feet, whatever. So now I'm securing that and I'm just going to weave these ends in just like I did before. Okay, now we can remove our, we can snip off our thread, turn it right side out and see what we get. We'll see what we have here. I just stick my hand in there, get it nice and shaped. Oh, there we go. We have a nice cozy pair of slippers for somebody to enjoy. And, so, and I have tried this one on, so this is probably stretched out a little bit, but uh, you get the idea. You can embellish these if you want to, put crocheted flowers or even crochet some trim around the top if you want to. Uh, do whatever you like, but this gives you a nice basic slipper to wear. You could even knit these for uh, liners inside of boots if you maybe lost a, lost boot liners for your kids' boots or something. It's a very versatile pattern. Um, you could pick up stitches and make it go up higher if you wanted to. Uh, it's just a lot you can do, and I hope you give it a try. If you enjoyed these knitting needles, you can find them at FabArt. I'll put a link in the video description as well as a coupon code so you can save 20% on this set. And um, it's a great set. It's nice and smooth. My yarn doesn't get caught where the cords attach. Um, you get several cords. Let's see, we've got how many cords here? One, two, three three, four cords, I do believe. And um, you can use them for any patterns that you would use um, straight needles or circular needles, size four through 11. So it's a very versatile set and I do recommend it. And uh, if you're gonna get it, make sure you get it before the coupon code runs out. I'm not exactly sure on the date, but by the time this video goes up, I will have it in the video description. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.